Hello, citizens, heroes, and villains out there. Welcome to Sean Humberg's Creative Corner. I'm Sean Humberg. Today, we're going to be taking on another viewer suggestion. Thank you, Don's Tech, for asking for some 3D printing. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. My favorite part of 3D printing is being able to solve a problem. Today, I have a problem. So the Renaissance Festival is opening again this year in Tennessee. <laughs> and we are definitely gonna to go to it. However, because of the pandemic, we are required to wear a mask. And I gotta be honest, I just don't think this is gonna go with the outfit. So today we're gonna to be going from the start to the finish process of designing, printing, and finishing a 3D mask to go with my Renaissance outfit. Without further ado, here we go. So I'm going to start with a scan in my head that I already have using a program called Skinect and an Xbox 360 Connect. The program we're going to be using to do this design is Blender. Everything that I do is modifying a single cube into the shape that I want. You may have seen something similar to this in my VR creation video that you can see in the link above. So what I'm doing here is just modifying that cube and I'm going to delete all of the edges but one and really start with just a face. But I've applied a modifier which gives it a mirror and then simply put that into the center of the face. That way anything that I edit will work symmetrically on the other side. I also turn on clipping and clipping means that anything that connects in the center actually becomes a single object. This is very important when doing a design like this because if you don't, when you try to print it, it's not gonna recognize it as a single object and your slicing software is gonna actually cut your object in half. One of the great parts about using a pre-existing model is that if I lower an area into the model, you're gonna see it actually sticking out. So this allows me to work very quickly and as you can see right here, there's a little bit of the model sticking through my previous model and I just need to bring it out. With this right here, I already know that I'm gonna do what's called a subdivide, which means taking all of those squares and chopping them up into four smaller squares to smooth everything out. So I'm really going through and getting a very rough shape of what I want and I'm gonna edit that later on. So I wanna make sure it fits to my face and I don't want it fitting completely snug because I do want to be able to move around and I don't want to be stuck in the mask. Whenever you're using a program like this, it's very important to learn your quick keys, your hot keys. So for this, one, two, and three, switch between vertices, line, and face. And E is extrude, so I can quickly jump between my lines and faces, select the line, face, or vertices that I need, hit E to extrude it out, and then just move it out to where I need it to be. So this whole process actually took me about four hours to design this mask. At least one hour of that spent troubleshooting. You also have the K tool or knife tool where you just hit K on your keyboard and you're able to cut the lines to separate them even more if you need to add a bevel somewhere that there wasn't a line to, to begin with. Right here is where I knew I was gonna have to create some kind of a breathing apparatus. So I didn't want it completely covering or, or fitting to my lips exactly. I wanted something to go over it. And this mask was sort of inspired by three different masks that I really like. So I took inspiration from Scorpion from Mortal Kombat, Hannibal Lecter from Silas the Lambs, and Darth Vader from, well, I think you know. And all of this part is really the same process. So we're gonna go and skip ahead a bit because this is just repeating the same extrude move, extrude move that I was doing before. So now you can kind of see the mass really starting to take shape and getting an idea of what I want. One thing that I learned from a previous mask that I made is that I don't want to make the mask completely tuck underneath my chin 
because then when I am trying to talk or I am trying to move, it really pulls tight or stops my movement. So I let it tuck under my chin just a little bit without completely going under. Right here, I'm using that knife tool just as before to cut out some holes where I'm gonna actually be able to breathe through. Right here, you can really see where I got some of that Darth Vader inspiration and added the points right up the chin. Now the mask is really starting to take over the main shape that it's gonna have in the final product. Now that I have my main shape, here's where I'm gonna start going in and creating the actual mechanism that's gonna hold in my filter or my cloth. So the way that I'm doing this is I am actually taking part of the inside and I'm extruding it into the mask. This is going to create a lip, which I can then create another mechanism for that will click into the lip that I created. This allows me to just put a piece of cloth over one mechanism and click the two together and give myself a filter. Here I'm selecting all of the vertices that I want to make smooth. I want the front of the mask to still have that very blocky feel to make it feel like armor, but I want the rest of it to feel kind of organic. So I've gone through, I've selected the areas that I want to make feel organic. Then I go through, subdivide them, and as you can see, it turns them into smaller squares. I'm then able to take this into the sculpt part of Blender. And the sculpt part of Blender allows you to make subtle changes by just pulling, pushing, and maneuvering your model like a piece of clay. And this is gonna allow me to get that organic feel that I want to the outside of the mask. Here I'm going through and selecting the inner parts of the lip that I created and I'm going to separate those to become the outer parts of the mechanism that's going to click onto the inside. Because I'm not going to maneuver the size or shape of that piece, by extruding this piece I know that they're going to fit together perfectly and I can just create the mechanism that I want going off of this shape. Extrude those center pieces to give us some brace and we have our inner mechanism. After that's said and done, we have our completed mask. Now I use a program called Tinkercad, which is completely free also, just like Blender, where I can create the sort of mechanics to hold the mask onto my face. I like to use Blender for an organic feel of everything, but I like to use Tinkercad for any mechanical components. Now for this program, Really all I'm doing is taking the mechanism that the filter will click into and making sure that it's going to fit properly. And I can do that by placing it where it's going to be, making a copy of the mask and telling it to recognize that copy as a hole. And that hole will cut out of the filter mechanism any areas that might be overlapping. I then create two holes to go completely across the mask to give me two areas that are going to allow me to tie on my strings or leather straps to hold on my mask. After that, we take it into a program called Cura. Cura actually allows us to create a slice of our mask. So with Cura, I'm able to import my mask place it where it needs to go on my print bed. And I'm gonna put this at a 0.2 millimeter layer height, which means that every time the printer lifts up, it's gonna lift up 0.2 millimeters. You can select different layer heights for anything that you're printing. The smaller the layer height, the more detail it's gonna get. With something like this, sort of a mechanical or cosplay, anything that I'm creating, I'm gonna do the maximum layer height because I want it to print quicker and I'm going to be doing a lot to it. I'm going to be doing a lot of filling and sanding anyway to build its structure and give it its smoothness. So I don't necessarily want to do the smaller layer heights because that can triple the length of time printing. I am going to set 100% infill. So the infill is the bracing that you have on the inside of what you're printing. So a lot of what you're printing is going to be mostly hollow. This, I wanted to be completely solid. It is something that I'm going to be wearing. I did want it to be sturdy. So I have 100% infill. That also means that I have less insulation inside the mask. Infill, that dead air space, that's going to create good insulation, which also means it's going to get hotter faster. Wow! Okay! 
I don't want that. So, 100% infill makes it stronger and keeps it cooler while I'm wearing it. All right here you can see what the actual print is going to look like as it's printing out. This shows the this shows the actual layers. And as you can see, it says it's going to be take two days and 12 hours to print. We save that file, throw it into 3D printer, and get to printing. Ludicrous speed, go! This video is actually sped up 10,000 times the actual speed. So that is why it does appear so jumpy, but you can see just how long it actually takes to print something out. The printer that we're using today is the Creality Ender 3 Pro. I highly advise this printer if you're wanting to get into 3D printing because it's only $250 for one, and for two, it's a semi-DIY kit. You're gonna learn how the components of a 3D printer work, and it's really gonna get you to understanding how the technology functions. This is just a great all-around starter printer, and even though I have the larger CR10, even the larger prints that I've done, I've done in multiple pieces on my several Creality Ender 3s. If you're interested in getting into 3D printing, I do have an eShops page on my website at seanhumbergscreativecorner.com where you can see all of the tools that I use for 3D printing in the Creative Corner. Check out the link in the description below. We now have our completed 3D printed mask. I'm quite happy with the way this turned out. Let's see what it looks like on me. No one cared who I was till I put on the mask. I think this is going to work great. I designed this with a couple of things in mind. First of all, the way that I designed the front right here is going to allow me to breathe very easily. Secondly, because it's formed to my face, it means that the airway is only going to go through this area without heating up my entire face, which is something that you deal with with a normal mask. And thirdly, this little piece right here is designed to click in right here. So I can put whatever kind of filtration or cloth I want on this piece Click it in the mask and we're completely safe, keeping everyone else completely safe from COVID. Last thing to do is get this thing finished, which is actually several steps. I don't know why I said last thing to do, but it's time to start finishing this thing. And the first step is to smooth out some of what we've already got. For that, we take out the Dremel tool. It's very important when you're dealing with PLA plastic though, it has a very low melting point, which means if you put your Dremel on too fast, you're gonna cause so much friction that you'll melt away the plastic rather than sanding it down. So it's very important to have it at a very low speed and to go very slowly with it. Next step is going to be using Bondo Spot Putty, which you may have seen in the Finishing Yoda video from before. If you haven't seen that, check that out. A lot of the techniques I'm going to be doing here are actually covered in that video, so I'm not going to go over all of them. Now we just leave that to dry and then sand it down. Now it's time to start sanding and I'll be using 150 grit sandpaper for this. Oh yeah. <laughs> Next thing I'm gonna do is spray paint this thing with some sandable primer let's see how it looks because of its light gray color this sandable primer is absolutely fantastic to really extenuate the other areas that i need to work on both with the spot putty and the sanding just gotta wait for that to dry now it's time for even more sanding i'm now switching to a 220 grit sandpaper to get even finer Now we've got to send it down pretty smooth and it's time to get some paint on. Okay, so it's not entirely dry yet, but I'm going to take 400 grit sandpaper and get this really smooth and do one last layer of paint. 
And now I am ready for the Renaissance Festival. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, subscribe, comment in the comment section down below what you'd like to see in future videos, and possibly even get your own mention here in the creative corner, like Don's Tech. Make sure to check out his channel, link in the description below. Hope you learned something today. I definitely had a lot of fun. Can't wait to see what we create together next. Sean Humberg, signing out. I got it.